Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. How are you? So I um, am going to be painting a pumpkin and we're going to add some leopard print to it. And I'm still trying to get situated here. Um, so what's everybody having for dinner tonight? I made cowboy casserole. Um, I've made it before and I saw the recipe actually on TikTok. And um, when I saw it on TikTok, the guy that it was actually a guy cooking it on TikTok. And he said, ladies, if you cook this for your man, he will forever be in love with you or something silly like that. But I was like, what is he making? And I thought, you know, I must have been hungry while I was watching that TikTok. So I thought, man, that looks good. And so um, I wrote down the recipe and actually I didn't write the recipe down. I ended up like just searching for it on Pinterest and I found a recipe that looked almost exactly like what he was making. And as I'm talking, I just remembered I left the corn out of the recipe. Oh man. Oh, well, it's got enough stuff in there. I think it'll be fine. But anyways, it's like ground beef and Rotel corn, which I forgot, shredded cheese, um, onion, and then uh, like baked beans or ranch style beans, which I couldn't find ranch style beans at Walmart. So um, you mix all that together, you brown your meat, you mix it all together and you put it in a casserole dish. And then on top of all of that, you put sweet cornbread and it is delicious. So that's what we're having for dinner tonight. And I'm waiting for it to cook. So we're not, we're, well, I say we, I am on a no red meat diet right now. My doctor recommended that I give it a try to see if it affects my cholesterol at all. And then after six weeks, I think um, I go back and they're going to test my cholesterol and see if it made any difference. And so um, we actually, instead of putting ground beef in the cowboy casserole, I did ground turkey this time. So I'm hoping it turns out just as good. It should though. So the color I'm using is, uh, what is this called? Light buttermilk. It's a kind of an antique off-white color. And we're just going to paint the base of our pumpkin this. And I'm not being real careful because up here I'm just going to paint the bow and I'll just paint over it. So I'm just slapping that paint in there just to get that area covered. I'm going to do another second coat real quick. We want this pumpkin to be covered real well because we're going to, it's going to, this is going to be the main color. And then we're going to do leopard print on top of this color. So did you guys enjoy the series of Facebook lives we did last week where we did the fall trucks? That was a lot of fun. We painted four different fall trucks and, or well, four fall trucks, but we painted them all a little bit differently. And, uh, each night, the, the way we painted them got a little bit harder. So I'm hoping everybody um, enjoyed that and found found one that they would like to try. And um, I just did a bunch of shipping today. So if you had ordered a blank before Saturday, I believe, it should have shipped out today. Now, I will warn you, if you've ordered stencils, our stencil material has been on back order for like two weeks. And every time they say it's going to be here, we get a notification that says, oh, sorry, nope, it's going to be on back order again. And so it was supposed to be here the 28th and we got a notification that it's on back order again. So if you have ordered stencils, your order is going to be delayed until we get more stencil material. If you ordered blanks and stencils, you may receive your order of blanks and then your stencils may ship separate. So just a little shipping update for you guys. Let me put another coat on that part. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to see if it affects this much, if I want to add a little bit. No, not this color. Not this color. Never mind. Uh, let's do this color. It's called Pebble. I want to do just a little bit of shading on my pumpkin with this before we do the leopard print. Just a tiny bit. I want to go overboard. And I'm not switching brushes because I don't think I have a shader brush that's, or like a, a angle brush that's this big. Ooh, that looks nice. Surprise myself sometimes. Let's get a little bit of water. My brush was getting kind of dry and dragging. We're just going to do the main shape of the pumpkin with this shading here. This is the pebble color. So we did the background with antique white and now we're shading with this pebble. You guys, I get to go shopping tomorrow, means Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to go see if I can find me some paint. 
because I'm running out of orange paint after last week. So I've got to go restock. Otherwise, we're going to be in dire, dire straits for doing Facebook Live painting. <laughs> Isn't it nice when you're a paint hoarder or a craft supply hoarder? Everybody else is having trouble finding supplies, and then all of a sudden you remember that you had a stash somewhere hidden away. <laughs> we'll do a little bit on the inside of these areas. It's kind of nice when you can just swipe the paint on there real quick, and you don't have to worry too much about getting it all over another area. Let's do, oh, I forgot to shade this area here. I'm going to do a little bit of shading underneath this bow here. I did not do a very good job of my shading underneath that. All right, we're just going to leave that alone for a minute and come back to it later. Okay, let's paint our leaves up here. We're going to do the Hauser medium green. And we're just going to paint this area here, which is our leaf. And so don't get it confused with the bow area. If you want to grab one of these, we have um, the blanks available for sale in the shop at shopdoorhangers.com. And um, you can also get the printable template if you are interested in cutting your own blanks. And don't forget, if you're a Painters Clubhouse member, to use your discount code, your special Clubhouse discount code. We welcomed a lot of new members to the Painters Clubhouse last week. It was so much fun. And then I got to paint live with them last night in the Clubhouse. Um, I think I shared a picture of it on my Facebook page for you guys. We painted it the fall mum door hanger and it was gorgeous, which that template's not available for you guys to buy yet, but it should be um, soon. Also, if you're not a template club member, template club members got their new templates today. Um, since it's the first of the month, they always get their bundle of templates on the first. And I have to say this bundle um, that we just put out, is like one of my favorites, I think. I just love fall designs and it made me really excited to see all of those. So I hope you guys enjoyed them too. So get that area covered with green really well. Um, we might even add just a little bit of a shading to it too because it's gonna look funny if my pumpkin's shaded but my leaves are not. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of the Hauser dark green to do a shading with. Dip just the corner of my brush and then I'm going to pull that up along the bottom side of the leaf. And then I might do some on the tip of the leaf here. I like the way these two colors shade together. The Hauser dark green and Hauser medium green. They're very pretty together. So I've got a damp brush and I'm just kind of pulling that paint on around that edge. I'll do a little bit down through here too. Um, this is the burnt sienna color. It's a reddish brown. Um, we're going to do a little bit of shading on it too to make it look a little different. But um, we do like to eat eggs. We, um, when we cook, we do breakfast for supper um, about every other week or so. And so when we do that, I'll cook a lot of eggs, but we don't buy them. They're from our chickens. Who lost their power? Did somebody comment that they had? I know Erica Wallace down in Louisiana lost power for several days and she finally got it back. I think yesterday or today. I said, boy, that'll make you appreciate it, won't it? Being without it for that many days. Get a little bit of black now. And I'm just going to dip a teeny bit of the corner of my brush in that and do a little bit of shading on this stem. Let me dip in a little bit of water. Sometimes if you feel like you're trying to shade and the paints and the shading color you're using is not moving, like it's just staying stuck, then you might need to get just a little bit of water, dab it off on a brush, and do it that way. Okay, I kind of like that. All right, we're going to do this bow. Um, kind of a 
reddish pink color. So I'm mixing half and half red um, tomato red and razzle berry pink. And we're going to see how that turns out. And that may still be too bright. So I may have to add a drop of black because I want it to be just a little bit darker than that. More of like a fall uh, burgundy color. One drop of black. Oh, that's perfect right there. So red, tomato red, raspberry pink. So just mix a red and a pink. It really doesn't even have to be any particular red and pink. And then add one drop of black to it. And you're going to get this really pretty burgundy. It's like a rosy burgundy color. And then we're going to use our flat tip brush. And we're just going to paint our bow this color. We're having to get creative with our paint colors. due to everybody being out of paint. So if you don't have the color you want, just mix it. And if you get a color that you just really, really like the combination of, I suggest that you write it down. That way you remember the combination of colors that you mixed. So like if I really loved this color, color combination, I would write down um, one part razzleberry, one part tomato red and then one drop black or something and that would be like my recipe for this color so you can keep your own little recipe book of colors that you need and if you ever go to the store and you can match that color and find it then you could do that but sometimes it's hard to find the exact color you want my husband's home I bet he's getting hungry for dinner. If you're just now hopping on, we're trying to paint this door hanger as fast as we can because I put dinner in the oven right before I went live. So I'm on a timer. <laughs> we're having cowboy casserole for supper. I'm excited about it. It smelled really good. I think I'm going to make some mashed potatoes with it too. I just hate that I forgot to put the corn in it, but I guess I could always mix the corn in later. Cook it separate mix it in like put it on your plate and mix it in you're in the painters clubhouse um inside the painters clubhouse membership site at paintersclubhouse.com and inside the facebook group for painters clubhouse you can find a calendar now i think in both places it's pinned in the announcements section so go to the announcements and look for the calendar if we haven't posted it yet, we should be posting it very soon, the September calendar, because today's the first, and we always try to post the calendar on the first of the month. And so you can look on that calendar. Now, the dates will always be posted for when we're doing tutorials, but sometimes the times will not be posted. So if I'm going to be doing a tutorial live, I might not let you guys know the time until a few days before. And so usually as that date gets closer, you can check inside the Facebook group to see if Megan, our camp counselor, has posted a designated time that you guys can expect me to be live. And of course, those videos are available for you guys to watch on replay at any time. So you don't have to catch them live. A lot of people in the clubhouse don't actually paint live. Oh, I thought I had, saw a hair or a paint drip or something. Um, a lot of people in the clubhouse don't actually plan to, to paint live with me. They just plan to watch and then paint later. But sometimes we have people who paint live with me. It just kind of depends on the, the person and the circumstance. It is kind of hard to paint and comment on a video at the same time. So a lot of times they enjoy painting later and talking now, being social. Ah, we got a, a dried paint booger on the door hanger and I'm running out of this color I may have to mix some more I don't want to have to so I'm going to see if I can stretch it to finish this ribbon we shall see there's another paint booger though scraping rock bottom here for this color just by my chinny chin chin. <laughs> so Latoya, we mixed this color. It's 50, it's 50, 50, half and half red, half and half razzleberry. 
and then we added one drop of black to it. So I'm going to see about just mixing some with no black and see, and then we're going to use that kind of as a, like a highlight color, maybe. We're going to see how this works. Almost shading it in with the lighter shade with no black. Because it turned out a little darker after it dried than I intended it to. So I'm just going to, instead of doing a second coat of that color, I'm just going to go back over it with the red and pink and kind of blend. And I have to keep my brush damp to do that. Up next is the leopard print. So if that's what you're here for, we got you. It's going to happen in just a minute. I have to lean over sometimes to see um, around the glare that this light is putting on my door hanger. All right, I'm going to dip my brush in a tiny bit of black and try to shade right underneath this bow. Let's see if I can do it without making a mess. I'm trying to keep it off the pumpkin. A little bit more water. There we go. That's looking better. Get a teensy bit more and do it down the length of the ribbon. So we're just taking a little bit of black on a damp brush. Yes, we're safe from the floods. We did get quite a bit of rain today, but it didn't flood here. It's okay. Um, we're hoping to be able to set up a different text notification system soon because the one we have now has a tendency to be a little bit glitchy. So if you haven't been getting your texts, we're going to be um, looking at, at getting a different thing to do it with. It's just going to take a little bit of time to get it approved for the, to be able to use it. Okay, this black is looking real good, but I almost used too much right through there. Now I'm trying to blend it out. It's making that bow look 3D, isn't it? Let's do some on the bottom side. Put a little bit of water bottom side of this ribbon. And then do a little bit on the bottom side of the other ribbon. A little bit more water. Sometimes I end up touching it with my finger to smudge it out. <laughs> it's like not doing what I wanted it to do with the brush, though. So. Come on. Blend, blend, blend. Okay. Now let's do a little bit on this middle part here. That's looking good. A little bit to do on this side. Oops, I need a little bit more. I'm trying to, trying to put just the right amount of paint on my brush. It's hard though, because it's like you either pick up too much or not enough. Okay, that's looking pretty good. That's looking good enough for me to stop because I'm like, okay. <laughs> Let me have a look at this real quick. We want to do our leopard print. Um, I think I want to do just a slight little highlight on this this bow. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get just a little bit of that buttermilk color, dampen my brush, and then I'm going to do a little bit. See, I'm streaking that, um, that paint. Oh, let's see that, that brush is way too wet. If it starts bleeding out and doing that, it's way too much. And if it starts to look crazy, I can go back and get my original red and pink color and just kind of go back over it. But yeah, I had way too much paint on my brush just, or water on my brush just then. And it kind of made a mess. I was trying to just add a light highlight right up there so that that bow looks fluffy. 
Oh, I just heard the one minute timer on the stove. I may have to run in there and turn it off and take the dinner out of the oven in the middle of this. I didn't paint fast enough. All this shading slows me down. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so we're gonna get a round tip brush. Okay, so next we're gonna add our leopard print down here. Where's the color I wanted? Is this dark enough? I don't think so. Um, this might be dark enough. Let me test it. Yep, this will work. Okay, so I've got my round tip brush and the base coat is light buttermilk. We shaded with pebble. Now we're gonna take desert sand. Toffee is also a very similar color. And we're just going to create a really light leopard print look. That way it's not overpowering. It's just cute and um, different. And so we're kind of doing wiggly shapes that look almost like a C or a U. And we're turning them different directions all as we go. And we're just going to work in the center section first, and then we'll move out from there. So I'm trying to like turn them and do them different, um, different directions. And then the ones that are over here um, on the edge, I'm kind of doing those half on and half off instead of overlapping where it shades. Look how good that looks. Ah. So now we're going to work on this section with some leopard print. Super simple. And this adds really cool texture to the pumpkin without having to do a ton of work. This is like leopard print is one of the easiest. It's about as easy as polka dots to me to add pattern. And the reason we did it in this really light toffee color is because if we had done it in browns and stuff, it would be really difficult to do lettering on here with and be able to read it. So by doing it in this color that's just barely different color than the background, it makes it easy to read your hand lettering. Leopard print is still very in, in style. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, and then last section. Oh, and I probably need to put a couple like up in here so that it doesn't look weird. Yeah, so if you're not a Template Club member and you want to be, um, today is September 1st, meaning that um, if you signed up by today, I think that the payment would come out today because payments come out on the first of every month. So you would still get September's bundle and you would be billed today. And um, you get 20 templates, and I think September's are mostly all fall and Halloween designs. You get 20 templates for just $30. Now, if you're a Painters Clubhouse member, you get $10 off that. Um, oh, hang on. Let me use my round tip brush and we're just going to do a little bit of a line down the middle of our leaves. There we go. And then um, we're going to dry this and do some lettering. Okay, let's do the lettering. Um, so we're going to use a filbert tip brush. It's got the rounded tip and we're just going to write happy and fall. Let me look at my picture real quick. So I'll make sure and get it like I wanted it. Okay. I'm glad I looked because I couldn't remember if it overlapped the bow at all. So we're going to overlap the bow just a little bit to be able to have room for it. I love these brushes for simple hand lettering like this, like this type of lettering. 
And one little tip, when you're doing your lettering, dip after almost every stroke in the paint. So, and then push down, lift straight up. Whoops, I didn't go down far enough. Push down and lift straight up. And then you will get nicer, smoother edges at the ends of your letters. You won't have that weird little, um, like feathering look that a brush sometimes leaves behind. There we go, right happy. We'll move that one down just a little bit longer too. And then we're gonna do fall, but we're gonna do it in, in a, with a, a round tip brush, real pointed brush, and we're gonna water down our paint just a little bit. So I'll put a few drops of water in my black paint. That way it flows a little better. Get it mixed up. So we're just going to thicken that downstroke. Do an A. Oh, I got my arm in the leopard print. I'll have to touch that up down here. Whoops. My paint was so thin it almost dripped on the door hanger. All right, there we go. Maybe touch up a couple spots. And there we go. Happy fall. Okay, I'm going to um, get my Posca pen, the middle size one, and do some quick outlines and things, and then we'll be done. So I'm just going to add some simple little outlines like this to my bow. trying to be quick about it that way they don't look like I tried to do it perfectly whoops as you can see I'm not doing it perfectly I kind of like that look better though I like when there's when it doesn't look perfectly done looks a little more hand painted that way let me wipe this off I've got to pump some more paint down into the bottom of the paint pen I think this paint pen might be running out I've got another one I need to get out to replace it And then we can add some down through here, like so. Okay, we're going to stop there. And then add just a little bit with a white one. Okay, now we got our white paint pen. These are Posca paint pens. They're in my Amazon affiliate shop. We're just going to add a few cute little white highlights to make it look a little more whimsical and light. Because that's the way I like it. Add just a little bit on the sides. They may not be as noticeable, but I think it's going to look good. Okay, I think we're going to call it done. I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, go paint your own pumpkin. If I had to do it over again, I would use a little bit more pink and a little less black on my bow. It's a little bit darker than what I really wanted, but you know, I still think it looks good. It looks fallish. And so um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed it too. So go paint your own pumpkin and be sure and sprinkle the love. Thank you guys for joining me. See you on Friday for Friday Fab Five. Bye you guys.